Father, we do thank you tonight for being the great I am, Jehovah, Counselor, and Wonderful Savior, the mighty Prince of Peace. We just pause for a minute, Father, just to reflect on the fact that you are here, that we are on holy ground, that we stand in your presence. Jesus, help us not to take this moment for granted. Help us to bask in your warmth, your loving presence. Father, help us to keep tuned in tonight to what your Holy Spirit will teach us. Help us to focus out everything else that would distract us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thankfully, I have not had very many close encounters with death. I did have one, though. I was a senior in college at Southern Nazarene University and was working as a volunteer worker with the youth department, the junior high group of Bethany First Church, my home church. Well, the youth minister asked me to start a little skit group, and so I began writing some of their material for them, and he wanted to take the skit group along with the junior high choir on a weekend choir tour, and he asked me to go along as a sponsor. So we boarded the bus about 6.30 in the morning with 70 junior high kids screaming and laughing and excited to leave town, and as most trips that start that early in the morning, about 10 minutes after the trip, they were all asleep. Heads on their laps and leaning forward and leaning back, and they were asleep. About 30 minutes after that point, our bus turned completely over two and a half times, going 60 miles an hour on the interstate, and skidded 350 miles and stopped on its roof in the median. It was amazing how calm and cool and collected those junior high teens were. I remember this one little boy named Lane. Lane jumped up from the massive bodies, which were now on the roof, which was now our floor, kicked open the emergency door, pushed it open with his arms, and stood up and said, okay, everyone, get to your feet and follow me. You're okay, I'm gonna help you out the door, everything's in control. Now myself and the other public sponsors were not quite as calm. In fact, we were going,
Jesus goes on. Then the rich man said, Oh, Father Abraham, then please send Lazarus to my father's home. I've got five brothers. He can warn them about this place of torment. Lest they come here and they die. But Abraham said, No, the scriptures are here. The scriptures have warned your brothers time and time again. And if your brothers won't bother reading, it will do no use to warn them. The rich man said, No. They won't bother reading the scripture, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will turn from their sins. Abraham said, hey, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't even listen to someone who rise from the dead. For some of you tonight, if you're not going to listen to what Jesus Christ has to say to you about where you're going to spend eternity in the Bible, and if you're not going to listen to the special evangelists that your pastors bring in for revivals during the and if you're not going to listen to me and mine, then right now, through the back doors, if a man would rise from the dead and come in with gray clothes on and talk to you about how tormenting hell is, you probably wouldn't even listen to me. Because your hearts have already begun the hardening process, just like Judas. Joel 2 11, the day of the judgment of the Lord is an awesome, terrible thing. Who could ever endure that kind of judgment? You see, the, the really amazing thing about forever, the really amazing thing that blows my mind about heaven and hell is this forever factor. I mean, we just can't get past the forever factor. The fact that heaven and hell goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, period. There is no end. Somebody wants to describe eternity or forever like this. They said if you were to gather all the grains of sand in the world and make one gigantic mountain out of them, and once every 10,000 years a bird would fly by and take off one grain of sand and take it somewhere else. Finally, when the entire mountain was dissolved, one day in eternity would have passed. That blows my mind. I cannot comprehend that. I can't logically compute how long forever is. It's infinitely impossible for us as humans. But we know this. There's no period in the sentence. There is no end. Heaven and hell goes on and 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 on. There is no end. We can't put a period in the sentence. I read an article, a true story, about an evangelist. And he wasn't getting very many calls, and so he decided to spice up his act. He had a special suit made. It was a suit that was flammable. It was made of flammable material. And at a certain point in his message, he would preach on hell, and he would pull a match out of his suit pocket, and he would ignite himself. And he would stand there and burn his flames inside his flammable suit and finish off the sermon on hell. And people would just flock to the altar, and sure enough, the stage would pick up. And this guy started going all over the nation preaching about hell. I don't believe that our God needs any gimmicks. I don't believe that Jesus Christ needs a gimmick to catch our attention about where we're going to spend eternity. And God knows my heart tonight. And He would know that I would never want to use a gimmick. But He also knows that hell is a place that should scare us literally to death. Hell scares me. And I'm glad it does. Because if hell doesn't scare me, I wouldn't take it seriously. God knows that we would not want to play on your emotions tonight. That's why we're not using this service at the very end of the week. That's why I squeezed in right in the middle here. Because this is to be a logical decision. It's not to be done out of fear or out of some emotion. But if you're not right with God tonight, you have every reason in the world to be just a little bit fidgety. Because very bluntly put, you're headed for hell. And that kind of anguish will never end. Everyone here will go to heaven or hell. That's pretty simple. Everyone here will go to heaven or hell. There is not one person that is exempt from heaven or hell. There's no in between. There's no here or not. There's no here or not because there's nothing created that can be done with a thing like hell. Man, it's pretty strong. She's good enough to have straight tonight, isn't she? Yes, she is. Because tonight, God can have me deal with you in a very blunt and a very straight way. And that is that all of you, someday, will go to heaven or will go to hell. There's nothing funny about that. There's nothing creative about where you will spend eternity. And I hope, if you're not right with God, that hell scares you. It scares
prayed with them. He gained control over Satan. The men died. And right now, he's sitting at the lap, the feet of Jesus Christ forever. Wow, are those things really true? Yeah, I get that off. I believe they are because you see, in the United States, when our friends or loved ones die, we don't really get to experience with them what the last moments of death are all about. They're drugged and they're on so much medicine or they're in a coma or they're under an oxygen tent and they quietly slip away to eternity. But on a mission field, where there aren't so many modern conveniences, and where the missionaries can actually sit and experience and feel with and listen to what's happening as someone literally passes from the conscious life to the unconscious, from life itself into death for all eternity. It's a whole different story. Satan is lying, and he's doing pretty good, and he's powerful, and he knows your weaknesses better than you do, and he hates you, and he's working double time right now to get you not to pay attention to me so that he can get you to spend eternity in hell with him. Thank God we serve a God who is so much greater. Greater is he that is in me than Satan who is in the world. A missionary woman, Jane Currington, maybe some of you have heard about her. She used to be a missionary nurse in a leper hospital in Swaziland, Africa. She told me a story just a few years ago. She said, in our colony in Swaziland, she said, again, the satanic influence was great. And she said, I went to give a man who had leprosy, he was sitting on top of the table, I went to give him an inoculation, a shot. She said, he crawled off the table, underneath the table, and became as a dog. She said, this was a man who was acting God. It was a man who became as a God. She said, Satan's power is real. And she said, Susie, it's just as real in the United States that we cover up. We cover up with fancy names and, and fancy television shows, and it's really Satan's power. And he's an inching of pressure over our lives. And we say, oh, it's not that bad. Everybody else is doing it. It is that bad. And it's the same power that's working double time on the mission field for the satanic cults. It's the same power that's working tonight to try to get you to talk to your neighbor or to get restless or to tune me out so Satan can block your hearing. Still, will some of you put off your decision? Tonight, there's an important decision for you to make here. What will it be tonight? Will it be heaven or will it be hell? What are you waiting on? Will some of you try to force God to bring a tragedy into your life and wake you up to say, come on, get with it. Be hot or be cold. You can't play the game. Have you taken those steps towards that or just like Judas? You're either serving me or you're not. But you can't buy the fence any longer. And some of you guys and girls have placed this macho mask image on the outside of your life. And it is too cool for me to walk down the aisle and then bow my head in all I'll tell you what. One day when every knee shall bow and every tongue who will confess, it won't be too cool. When God says in part, I never knew you go to hell. Well, that's frightening. That scares me to death. And right now it's so easy. Right now, it's so simple to bow and offer prayers and say, Father, forgive my sins. I want to live my life for you. This is not for the Christians tonight. Oh, Satan would love right now to put some doubts in your mind. He would love, Christians, to put some doubts in your mind and, and maybe some fearful thoughts that you're really not going to heaven. Hey, that's not for you. If you're a Christian right now, then you should have the assurance and the peace that you're on your way to heaven. This message isn't for you. Praise God for your assurance. Fantastic, you're where you should be with Jesus Christ. You have no need to be frightened right now because you're on your way to the kingdom of God and heaven itself to live forever. But if you're not right with God, you know it. Right now, if there are some things in your life that really are, are not what they should be, if Jesus is not going to your life, you're not headed for heaven. And tonight, your decision can be very easy. Joel 2 11, the day of the judgment of the Lord is an awesome, terrible thing. Who can endure it? That is why the Lord says, turn to me now. While there is time, give me all of your hearts. Joel 2.32, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's you. Tonight. It's so simple for you to gently let God remove that macho image to help you slip off the mask to make your way an altar prayer. When it's easy, when it's simple, when you have Christian friends and counselors that pat you on the back and affirm you and say, we believe in you, we're praying with you. Thank you for coming. And for you, who will come and pray, God says, you are the one who will be saved. You are the one who can have the peace. You are the one who can have the assurance to spend forever in heaven. Tonight, again, as we close, the message is so simple. Heaven or hell. Deuteronomy 30, listen closely as we close. Jesus says, look, 
Today, I have set before you life and death. Depending on whether you obey or disobey, I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, to keep His commands. But if your hearts turn away, and if you won't listen, and you are not obedient, I declare to you this day, you will certainly be destroyed. This day, I call heaven and earth as witnesses that I have set before you life and death. Choose life. Choose the love of the Lord your God and to obey Him and to cling to Him. Choose life. God bless you. Choose life. But He loves you so much. He's not going to force you to make a decision. It's your decision. I want every eye here and every ear tuned in as we close. It's just this simple. God casts one vote for you. Satan cast one vote against you. To time. You cast the deciding vote. What will it be? Heaven or hell? Stand please and bow your hands. Nobody can remember. Close your eyes. Uh, anybody talk over there? Close your eyes. Uh, anybody talk over there? Every eye closed, every head down. the most important decision that you're going to make in your life. If you were gone in the next 10 seconds, or if Jesus Christ were to return in the next 10 seconds, where would you spend the next 10,000 years? And that's only the beginning of an eternity that will not end. With your heads bowed, no one looking away. No singing, nothing special. If you're not right with God, you know it. Right now, I want you to leave your pew and come down and pray. Come down, come quickly. You're not right with God. Do it now. Well, it's simple. Well, it's easy. I want to ask no friends to pray with each other. I want you to come and pray by yourself. There'll be time later for your friends to come. But this is something you need to pray through on your own first. Well, everybody praying by yourself. If you're not right with God, you're not really sure if you were not an eye that you'd go to heaven and you need to come to pray.
There's a real battle going on in the lives and hearts of some of these kids who are still standing out there in their pew. Although their heart is pumping, and they feel your conviction, but their hearts are beginning to harden. Father, help them to come to you while there's still time. Help them not to put it off until it's too late. Father, help them to let you have your way in their lives. Help them to give in to the battle, to announce you as the winner and the champion in their lives. Every head bowed and God closed, I'm going to ask you a question. Let me look around. Well, this is your hand up really quickly and put it down. If you're a God in honor and you don't know for sure that you go to heaven, there's your hand. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. You don't need to be looking around. This is personal. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for being honest. Anybody else? There's no need to try to keep your eyes off that thing. Thank you. Don't try to fool God. Now I'm going to ask you another question. And I want you to answer it in your own mind. Just silently don't answer that one. Those of you that raised your hand, and there were several of you that did, if you're not sure where you would spend eternity tonight, then why in the world are you still standing where you are? When Jesus waits for you with open arms at this great altar, saying, come on home. Come on home. What in the world are you doing standing out there? Are you going to let Satan win the battle? Because by not choosing Christ, you are not going to choose Satan. Are you going to choose Satan tonight? Or are you going to let God have his way? It's so easy to leave your pew and kneel on an altar of prayer. We're going to wait just a few more minutes. Those of you that raise your hands, I want to ask you to come pray. Let Jesus win the battle. What are you doing out there? Come down here, we need you down here. We want to make sure that you're on the right way to heaven. If you need to pray, come down, because we're going to close in a few minutes. Several of you can pray, I saw your hands. It's so simple, now's the time to do it. Clear over your left side, there's a whole lot of, a whole lot of space for you to play. Clear over your left side, by the room. Are you coming from? I'd be scared to death. I really would. I'd be scared to death to leave tonight knowing that I was not right with God Almighty. Oh, I tell you, there's not a better feeling in the world than being able to say, praise God, it is well with my soul. What release, what freedom, it is well with my soul. While others are still coming, and if you need to pray, I want you to keep coming. We're going to sing, be my Lord. If you need to pray, I want you to come during this course as we see. Jesus, this is the last time we'll sing it. Will you come? Peace.